Hi, good morning, amazing audience. We are live. We are in San Francisco as we speak, specifically the location of Lafayette Park in San Francisco. Helps definitely. I'm here live with Adi Shakti. It's a great opportunity to have her here. Adi, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. My hands are cold, my apologies. Oh my god. They are cold, aren't they? Very cold. Yeah. Adi's <laughs> hands are warm. She lives here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Adi, please do tell us which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this specific time in history. Well, I think it was your basic interest in how your thoughts and feelings motivate your life. And mm. I assume you were searching for like-minded people or close to it. Yeah. And I definitely follow that way of being. Yeah. And so I think energetically, you found me on the great internet. Yeah, the great <laughs> internet. <laughs> And it um, that's how it evolved. And I really appreciate that you and Amanda are going around and doing something really different and unique with your lives. Yeah. And also trying to meet people, going outside your own culture. Yeah. And that's more of what I think humanity is evolving towards. So the internet is a, is a mental, um, energetic version of that. And you are physically doing that. Yeah. And it's lovely to see. You know, I don't know you very well, and you don't know me very well, but just from that basic idea, yeah. I applaud that. That's amazing. Now, that is courageous. Who did you learn the ability to be courageous from? What do you mean, what's courageous? Well, you seeing that we share similar energy, uh, okay. and well, then I... being willing to still come out here, right? And have a conversation it is well, of courageous. course I'm willing it's it's interesting to meet people who are willing to do something different than the average norm yeah yeah so to me it's um, it's not, not courageous. necessarily courageous no? what it's would you more say it part is? of the evolutionary process of how things are shifting mm. you know you can always choose to see the glass half full or half empty and sometimes it's challenging to see it that it's half full but um, I'm always open to new experiences, you know, within reason. I wouldn't put myself in danger. You know, <laughs> I checked you out online and I saw you were with Amanda and, yeah. and that you have kids. And yeah. so that felt comfortable for me. Plus, it's not that far. I, I know you had some people drive like three hours to meet you. Yeah. I, I don't think I would do that. No offense. Right? No, nah, well, that's different. <laughs> no, that was right? a lot. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, to come here. Yeah. And I did try to dissuade him to come to Oakland, but here we are. Yeah. So who did you learn that from then? That ability to so see things I, positively then. Yes. Let's do that then. Yeah? yeah, so I do healing work and I got into that because of the dysfunctional and um, frustrating upbringing. I'm actually an immigrant. I'm a child immigrant. My mm. family immigrated here and for whatever reason we never lived in environments where we felt particularly welcome. So, sometimes we did but as our family got older we didn't. So we experienced discrimination and abuse, even though obviously I look white and obviously I passed for white. We, are, we did not have did you that experience. From? I'm from Israel. Okay. Yeah. So um, we grew up where our religion was made fun of or who I was was made fun of. And my parents were not prepared for that. They didn't. Just like you and Amanda weren't prepared for the cold. Like nobody told you it would be like that in, in the summer in San Francisco. Nobody prepared us for what life in America would be like. Yeah. So um, because of that, my parents were not able to be supportive. And I, as um, the person I was, I, want, I have a need to understand. I need to make sense of things in order to feel safe and stable. So I started researching. I, I went to the library and looked up you know, the whole psychology section and read about that. And that led me to more um, healing modalities, therapy, got interested in that. And then that led me into being interested in more emotional healing. And then that led me into being interested in more energetic and spiritual types of work. Mm. So I do all three. Um, and they've all given me the, the framework and the vocabulary to make sense of my life, bit by bit, it's not perfect, but also now I'm expanding it to the whole world. I want to understand mm. why am I here at this point in time, what's going on really on the planet. I know every single country on the planet has some issues, some more than others. You know, we in America are supposed to be at the very top. And um, also in Israel, there's a connection between Israel and America, and they definitely have aspects to them that are similar to America, even though they're a much smaller country, yeah. actually very similar to your country. Uh, but 
uh, I come from both those places, so because I'm actually in the middle, I'm, I'm not totally one and totally the other, I have a different perspective on things. I'm always on the outside, which can be challenging at times, but it does give you a more larger perspective on what's happening. Yeah. So all that's very interesting to me because um, I really do want to not just understand, but make my own contribution as you and Amanda are to try and improve the world and see it more half full and, and influence people, or not influence, but uh, invite them to witness it that way also, to bring more light onto the planet. That's really what I feel we're all here for. And, and I've seen the other videos that you've done online and you know people, some people that you've interviewed reflecting similar points of view. And that's why I especially wanted to applaud you First of all, that you are people of color traveling around, and you spoke to a woman of color that mentioned that, that yeah, that's not did. something seen. And my husband is actually a black American, mm. and so I have a long experience with his perspective, and you know, he, he educated me on uh, deeper aspects of what it means to be a black person in America, mm. and I educated him on what it means to be I immigrant to and, and uh, being raised Jewish and Israeli, so we had um, interesting conversations and we still do and I totally love that but I certainly wasn't educated that way and my parents certainly weren't comfortable that way yeah. but so I, I I live a very different life now than what my parents or what I thought when I was a child that I would end up being it's yeah. very different so there's no uh, rules there's no safety nets there's no there's nothing here, there's only up here. Yeah. There's the divine. Learning, as you learn to expand your awareness and learn to see the games on the planet and the larger structures that you are a part of, whatever country you're in, yeah. you understand that there's also a balance, that as above, so below. And when you can open yourself to that or, or consider that as possible, that opens your mind, so you start to see the reflections and then you can start to see, well actually, there's a greater plan in mind, there's a larger cycle in mind beyond my physical brain's ability to perceive. Yeah. And it's really about, well, I, in my opinion, yeah. it's really about... This is your opinion, you definitely yeah. Yeah, don't need to like, that's your, like you could go for it, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and so in my opinion, the ultimate evolutionary process for all human beings is being able to be in the body in physical form in three dimension but still remember that you come from the source you come from the non-physical from the divine however you want to imagine that yeah. and to have that connection to the light while you're trying to bring light in is the i feel the evolutionary goal of humanity in general just like you know in older days there was slavery some people enslaved other people or there was um uh, nobody knew how to read they just they prevented them from reading and then they learned how to read and then they learned how to treat each other better humanity as a whole has to learn that for millenniums of time it can be very challenging to be in your own little 70 to 100 year period of time and to think oh my god nothing's changing but you have to expand your awareness to thousands of years not just the hundreds of years thousands to really see the patterns and then be, be at peace Love that. Where's the yeah. best place for people to connect with you, Adi? Oh my gosh, it's so cold. Where's the best place for people to connect with you? Um, Adi Shakti Healing. You can Google that, and then you'll see a web page or a Yelp page, and then that will lead you to my website. Let's switch gears. Yeah. Let me invite can you. Can I leave a phone number? Yeah, sure. And my local number is 510-874-4725. Oh, wonderful. You can always put that in there as well within the. Uh, as well, like put your link in there. Mm. Let's switch gears. Okay. Are you going to ask me about my shoes? No, Are you going to take me to the Caribbean? I'm going to I'm in, invite I'm in you looking. now <laughs> into my time machine that I is surrounded <laughs> with beautiful, warm, blue I know, especially Caribbean here. Water. Not your, surrounded by fog. Not like, fog, <laughs> but warm, blue Caribbean water. What is your earliest childhood memory? Um, my earliest childhood memory, or one that comes to mind, is in Israel, there's a typical salad, Middle Eastern salad, with chopped tomatoes and cucumbers and olive oil and lemon juice. That's like a typical thing in peppers. Mm. It's not like in America where you have lettuce salads. Yeah. It's more chopped vegetables. So we would go to the beach and have a big bowl of this salad 
and then we would make um, they're like little burgers but they're they're like little football shaped and they have pine nuts and cumin and parsley yeah. we'd make a whole bunch of those and that would be our lunch so when I would play in the water I, I had such a early attraction to food my my love of the different flavors of food that in my mind while I'm playing in the water I could not get it out of my head and I There's would rush back to era. the area <laughs> by myself and sneak the little the little burgers and I'd dip them in the juice like dig it in the sun <laughs> and I could feel the pull like I should be in the water in the sun having fun but oh my god this is so delicious <laughs> how old were you at this time I was probably five mm. yeah why do you think it's so clear what why do you think, do you think it's so clear, so clear? As I, I still love food yeah I love the the flavors of the so let's see the one of the ways that I feel the divine yeah. here to have sensual experiences either through touch or the beauty that we can see around us but also through taste and for me that idea that you can take all these different ingredients that the earth has given to you and if you eat meat that the animals have given their life to you and that you can use different herbs and spices and make your own unique creation depending on the culture you come from and then taste it it's like the cycle of the earth coming to you and feeding you and it's the deliciousness of it just blows my mind. Yeah. So even as a I child, <laughs> you found that right. <laughs> now you listen to these conversations and you were able to reflect before you got here, right? Yeah, absolutely. And then you, I do and my you connected, right? You, it connected, <laughs> didn't it? Yeah. To who you are today. Can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you could I, in my I mind? I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> I love the aspect though of the multicultural uh, perspective you dive or dove or you continuously dive into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just love that. Well, because yeah? yeah, I am. From yeah. the cultural cultural perspective, yeah? yeah. It's not really taste that much, but definitely what you experience through that, right? Mm -hmm. I love that. The yeah? memory of home. Exactly. Yeah, like Kalalu. Like Kalalu. <laughs> this woman did her research, yeah? I hope all of you listening. Do Aquarius that too. Virgo rising. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, we were. If we fast forward to when you were twelve years old, what was your favorite song? You know, again, because I come from Israel and our family was more uh, traditional in its upbringing. I did not listen to popular music okay. until I was thirteen. So I was surrounded by either Israeli music, Russian music. Or French music so I grew up hearing Edith Piaf and Charles Aznavour and different kinds of traditional Russian folk songs and um, Does one Israeli. come to the top in your mind that as well? No it's just all of those together okay. all right. yeah all right. I know I know the band uh, Adodaim they were like a, a male group that sang and yeah. they were similar to Simon and Garfunkel but yeah uh, that Do you kind of one American song from them that comes to mind No, but yes, I will say that there was an album called Jerusalem of Gold, Yerushalayim Shan Zahav, that was very popular after the Six Day War, and yeah. that was played a lot in our house. I'll check and that's it out. a very po there's a I very popular song. I hope it's on YouTube. Song. Is it on YouTube? YouTube. Or? Oh, it's absolutely on okay. YouTube. It's an extremely popular song. It's very patriotic, but it's also um, beautiful lyrics, beautiful melodies. Um, a mixture yeah. of cultures. Yeah. yeah, Israeli Israeli music is much more European than it is American. Okay. Yeah, so it's different. Yeah. We've arrived at our destination now, but yeah. before we get off of this time machine, there's a small decoration form, so it's yes or no. We're going okay. to move pretty quickly here. Are you okay. ready? Yeah. Adi, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Um, my students. Are you married? Yes. Do you have children? No. Do you believe in God? The divine. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? More than three hours? No. How about three hours a week? Yeah. What about screen time, the phone and the computer? More I than don't eight? Have, I don't have a smartphone. And no, no, definitely not more than eight. No. Less than eight hours a day? Mm -hmm. Oh, a day? Yeah. Oh my God, eight hours? How can you work? How can you do that? <laughs> <laughs> no. If you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents Adi Shakti, what would you say that is? Um, I would say learn to own your space. Mm, love it. Mm. 
Adi Shakti, this was a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Um, I would like to say that whatever you can do in your life to allow yourself to forgive and have compassion for whatever faults you may feel you have, please go ahead and do that and then allow whatever form of the divine in whatever way is comfortable for you to allow to come into your life and you will find delight. Adi Shakti, this was a great pleasure. Thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convert with Angel Jones. Shalom, toda. Shall, what does that mean? It means goodbye and thank you. Shalom. Toda. 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 Did you have fun? I had fun. High five. Oh, it's cold. <laughs> thank you, Amanda.